And here we are. Welcome. Welcome to the countdown of 21 days to the Spirit Symposium, the 12th U.S. Spirit Symposium in Washington, D.C. What a joy. For the first time ever, we have a National Spiritist Meeting with a, a nationwide effort to happen exactly in the capital of the United States of America. A beautiful program that is going to happen in actually 20 days. Because today is April 1st and we are in the very beginning of this effort, the countdown. We have here tonight our dear friend Bernadette Liao, who will be joining us to talk a little bit more about one of the most essential components of this program, which is not only for adults. Did you know that in the United States of America, when we do a national meeting, we also have space for activities for children and youth? And it has been 12 years since day one, we have accommodated the children and youth and it has been like this ever since. And uh, it won't be different this time. And you welcome you and your children. And uh, Bernadette Liao is going to be here with us in a minute to tell us about a beautiful workshop for uh, spiritist educators, as well as tell us about the program for youth and children. They have a specific program. The educators work very diligently in that regard. And you know, for all those who are following us, this is not a moment only to announce to you what's going to happen there, but also to ask for your help to pray together. It's when we are 21 days in a row preparing together the grounds for this beautiful effort. Even if you're living elsewhere in this world, you're part of it. You're part of it because this meeting, the 12th U.S. Spiritist Symposium, is also your way as a spiritist and as a friend to join forces, bringing new vibrations to the capital of the United States of America. Because after all, there's only one boat, and the boat is called Earth. The Earth is interdependent in its different parts. If you're living in another part of the world, you depend on the USA as much as we depend on you. So we ask for you to join us in your prayers, with your kind words, etc. So you can also ask questions, okay? I see here our friend Lea Severo. The United States Spirits Federation is here with us. Our dear Sergio Santos, Lusa Boya. Renata Santos, thank you very much. Addison Bossali, Sunshine is here with us. Ricardo Bittencourt, Ana Cris, Glauco Cardoso, Elisangela, Luciana Souza, Laura Colihi, our dear Andrea Torres, and many more friends. Feel free to ask your question, and uh, we'll also address, because sometimes your question brings about a topic or uh, an insight that will be beneficial to all. This U.S. Spiritism Symposium is titled Enlightening Answers to Our Daily Questions. No, there is no more, no best time on the earth than to address the daily questions that we have. And Spiritism can do it all. Let me open the line here for our dear Bernadette Liao who is going to uh, talk to us right now. Hello, Bernadette. How are you? Happy Easter. Hey, happy Easter. Hello, Vanessa. <laughs> Hello. How Mara. are you? I'm doing good here. In Lots Sunday. of uh, oh. chocolate eggs? No, not, not no. really. Time no. to lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> You know, I'm going to go on this diet, although we really need a spiritual diet just to go through the narrow door. <laughs> All those vices that we have. So, 
but mm -hmm. yeah but today i volunteered um at a church and helping the kids with easter egg hunting and it was very cute so they did all the candy for me and you know you were talking about a church bernadette you came from a catholic background and then you became a spiritist mm -hmm. and you have been actively working on spiritism in the united states of america specifically not only in san diego california but uh, you also have a nationwide um, uh, commitment as well together with the United States Spiritist Federation and its uh, Children and Youth Department. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the beauty of the works of uh, with children and youth in Spiritism? Oh, I would love to. So, um, well, the children and youth we know it's so important and um, when I think of children, I think first of us, because as we learn about our incarnation, we forget that we're going to come back as children. So when we say the children are the future, we are the children of the, we, we are the children of the future too. Mm -hmm. So if we want this world to be better when we come back, so we need to do something. And we also need to work with children. And I'm really worried about it because I, as a teacher, I see a lot of kids with trauma, no spirituality, very aggressive, gangs. So this was worry always on my mind. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create lessons that first work a lot on, on the moral values, the teachings of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I love about the spiritism is that we can connect the moral with the thinking and that mm -hmm. that's what made me change although i'm very grateful for being raised catholic amazingly mm -hmm. i was missing that link that thinking that spiritism would give us to me and i'm very grateful so uh when i came to the united states and san diego there was nothing here in my town and i had a child and I was extremely worried about it Mm -hmm. So there is nothing here for her when she was five years old. So I start thinking in the future, that's what I want to do. I want to help children. And not only that, I want to help parents, educators, mm -hmm. because I've been there and I'm still working on it to become a better, a better parent. Um, and how important it is to plant the seed of the spirituality that we are eternal human beings. And then when I became a teacher, then everything got together in my head because then I could work on lesson plans. I, I learned a little bit of Waldorf school. I studied mm -hmm. to become a Waldorf school teacher for a couple of years, and then I went to public school. And, and that's pretty much my passion. Yeah. My passion is, you know, and do whatever I can to help those beautiful souls. Challenging, very yeah, challenging. <laughs> this new generation is, oh my gosh. If you're a parent today, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. If yeah. you're an educator today, you know. And the spirit is educated when those beautiful souls come and the cute, cute faces and the cute bodies come there. And it's a personality. We need to do a lot. So exactly. Help. So you're you're talking about Bernadette the fact that uh, there is the need also to bring this uh, spiritual awareness to youth, and it's not that the spirits are not aware of it, but in our society, especially in the United States, God has been put aside of everything. We no longer have uh, uh, space for spirituality and religiosity in our daily lives in schools or mm -hmm. so we pretty much can tell that we're living at a, in a generation that is not given um, space to commune with God ostensibly so it's hard 
And I want to、uh-huh. show to the people who are. I'm going to share the a little bit of the screen here because、uh, we have here with us the flyer of the program for the children in the symposium, and it talks about how they are going to also have their questions addressed in their lives. So. The program in the symposium is gonna give children five and up an opportunity to have、uh, their own questions addressed, and、uh, the whole day they are gonna have specific activities in a in a parallel room or parallel rooms with educators discussing about.、Um, The answers to their daily questions, right, Bernadette? You want to tell us more, a little more, to the ones who have their children. So, why、yes. they should bring their children to this program, please, Bernadette? All right. When I was thinking about the topic, um, it came to me the word "why." Why? This is something that all children ask and even us. So, at first, this is what came to my mind. Uh, the three P's, letter P, it、mm-hmm. was pain, progress, and prayer. So、mm-hmm. we're gonna start talking about pain and suffering. Pain and suffering. Pain, pain. Why? Why you suffer? Why you go through a lot of trials? Because the kids go. It could be just dealing with their little brother and little sister. Right, and then how does this connect? How does it help you to progress?、Mm-hmm. And and how prayer helps you during those moments. So we're gonna learn about how the pain and suffering bring、um, makes you stronger. You learn about the consequences. You take actions.、Um, you grow spiritually. You pray. You become more compassionate. But this is something that spiritualism really helps us to deal with all those trials in our lives. So、mm-hmm. we are still learning. So we're going to start with this with the kids, the little stories, situations of this people, this person, this boy, this girl, this little animal, and they were sad. Something happened, and what happened in the end? What did you learn with it? And we're and the first part we're going to do that is dealing with challenges, and in the afternoon we're going to go, all right. So not only what you have learned, but what the coping skills. Because, as as an educator and a teacher, a lot of my students they do have coping skills, which is punching, kicking, <laughs>、uh, doing something violent. So wait a minute.、Yeah. What about praying?、Yeah. What about breathing? What are other things that you can burn? Because you are growing, you're gonna go through that. And then also, we're gonna dedicate some time, some time during the program for their own questions. And this is gonna be really good with the youth program, which Claude Denon is when she she's、uh, talking to you. She's gonna talk more on how we're gonna deal with this and. Because teenagers they have tons of questions, you know.、Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I try to do to align with our when you know what's going on. Why? Why does this happen to me? Why did you do this? Why I don't deserve? What we are trying to do with the kids is take away that idea of victim, because we feel like we are victims. Yes. You know, we, oh, it's not my fault. One thing they say is that、oh, she's mad at me for no reason. He did this to me for no reason, and I say, honey, there is always a reason. <laughs> you will not be aware of the reason is you might not like the reason,、mm-hmm. <laughs> and the reason can be something else that happened to them at home and at the end of the line. But there is always a reason. It's what to do when that happens. Yes, and of course, this is going to be、um, age appropriate. We learn the stories for the little ones, and going deeper 
teenagers always connecting with the spirits book and Kardec teachings in the books. That's beautiful. And Bernadette, there is also going to be a moment in the symposium which is going to be precisely at uh, 4.30 p.m. In a separate room, there will be two workshops. And one of the workshops is going to be for spiritist educators. When you, Carol Correa Smith, Ligia Carvalho, and Alba Morales are going to be exploring techniques for children and youth spiritist educators. So this is going to be a workshop giving um, practical tools for spiritist educators to it's almost like a continuing course for spiritist educators um, to implement in their programs in their sense you want to tell us more about what you guys been preparing in that regard Actually, we had a wonderful um, meeting yesterday with this beautiful ladies, you know, mm -hmm. so creative. And it's so good when we have all the four of us so passionate about education mm -hmm. and with different experience but with the same love. Um, after our meeting, we decided that the problem that we see, so the challenge that we see, is that we have a lot of volunteers but they are not necessarily teachers. So they don't, do not come from a teaching background. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that is very common is about lesson planning, how to write a lesson, and, yeah. and the challenges that we have in the classroom. So we're going to have a few minutes that's going to be theory. Lisa Carvalho is going to introduce a little bit of the theory about um, you being an educator, the children, about teaching, and then we're going to split into two groups. Mm. in the room, and we're going to teach a mini lesson, but they're going to work with us. So we're going to very fast. This is a lesson with a with a topic that we're going to, mm -hmm. we already have the topic, I don't know what I'm going to say, but uh, it's just we have a, a topic for for the young ones. And then we're going to do a mini lesson together with several techniques on how to engage the child. And then, uh -huh. and then we're going to have the teenagers doing the same. Uh -huh. It's going to be led by Lisa and Alba. And Carol and I are going to be working with the kids. And then later, we're going to switch. Why? Because if you work at a spiritual center as an educator, you know, sometimes you might have in the room all the ages together. Mm -hmm. That's very common because you don't have a lot of teenagers or children or you don't have enough space. So even though you'll be teaching uh, a young child, suddenly you might need to teach a teenager. So it's always good. And it's going to be a lot of hands-on doing. We're going to have some music, too. We're going to try to add games and activities. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you know, Bernadette, I was looking at the registration. If people go to the spiritsymposium.org website, they're going to get the information. There is a registration. For children, it's only $10. You know, it's almost unbelievable because it's so much work on the behind the scenes. They're going to be granted a a whole day of program and it's so beautiful, it's so uplifting. They're gonna mingle with other children who are being raised uh, under the same uh, principles and opportunities. You know, I see that it's such a blessing that it's almost as if we're living in, in a different planet because such a program does not exist in this world yet, right? Yeah? And one of the the things that I love to hear, I've been doing this for 10 years, uh -huh. the youth yeah. program with the symposium. I just didn't go to the first one, Balmore, and last year we had some personal issues. But the kids come to this room and they are just like in awe. They're like, ah, so what happened, honey? I didn't know that there are other kids that go to Spiritual Center. I thought it was just me. 
just mm-hmm. my center. And they were so excited that they are not the only one. So they bond and they are all happy that that's yeah. what happened. Talk about reincarnation and you know what I'm talking about. They're just like, I thought it was just me. It's adorable. I won't, I won't forget, Bernadette, when you first coordinated the, the activities on in um, Florida. I think it was Fort Lauderdale in 2010, yeah. right? Yeah, there were so you, many kids. Oh there were God. so many. You brought them all to stage and you're singing yeah. and you brought the whole crowd to sing together. Yeah, and it do was you remember like, that song? <laughs> Oh, well, that's a stretch. Huh? <laughs> well, that healing power flows through me. Yeah. Healing power flows through me. Everybody was dancing. Yeah. It was good. And I agree with you. When um, I will never forget, Bernadette, you said something that is unbelievable. What we need the most is to recognize that we're not alone. And I won't forget when I was only eight years old. In the city of Rio de Janeiro, we were living there for a while with my family and participating in a spiritist center. And we were brought to this spiritist uh, activities day and they were talking about Moses and the spiritist view on the Ten Commandments. And to date, the lesson was so impacting that I remembered the disposition of the classroom, the teacher the desks, the people, even the paper on the desk and what was written. And I was only eight years old. It's not like a million years ago, but it was a while ago. And I remember the feeling. It was like uh, so deeply touching. And often I feel that that vibrational imprinting on that day gives me a lot of fuel to date, to date. Uh And all the activities that I participated later in the Spiritist Youth uh, activities, outreach activities, etc., kept bringing to me the certainty that that was the way to go. And here we are today. You had your experience since the Catholic Church and then into Spiritism. And now you are bringing um, one of the leading educators in this country together with others that are bringing to the new generation this certainty that they are not alone, that they have not only a voice, but a space to uh, experience the depth of their religiosity, their spirituality. So it reminds me, Bernadette, Mm -hmm. of a message that I read in the book Living Spring by Emmanuel that I would like just to quote a few excerpts as a means for us to bring uh, this conversation to a closer closure today um, as we pray together with the people who are with us right now or who'll be watching on demand so we can raise vibrations to this beautiful moment that is being built as we speak and will be materialized on April 21st in the capital of of Washington, D.C. Emmanuel Titles, chapter 106, Let us serve the good. And he quotes uh, from John chapter 1, verse 5, The light shines in the darkness. And I see many children, as you say, that are going through nowadays and youth, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of anguishes. And he begins Emmanuel by saying, do not feel afflicted because you seem to be alone as you serve the good, he says to us. Jesus too was alone before bringing his companions together for the apostolic endeavor. He was alone facing a vast world like a farmer who has no tools with which to work to clear an immense forest. Nevertheless, Christianity emerged as a living temple of love. And it is still under construction for human happiness. Jesus, however, despite knowing the power of the truth, 
that he brought within him did not use his superiority to humiliate or hurt anyone. He did not waste time on inappropriate criticisms. He did not engage in pointless arguments. He actually established the redemptive kingdom. And I'm just cutting short to go to the very end of this message. Therefore, let us continue on our redemptive march ahead, even when we feel alone. It reminds me of a week ago when we were in the march for us, for our lives, all the youth of this country gathering together in Washington, D.C. to march for their lives. And I think it's so beautiful that this year we have this, this spiritual march through the U.S. Spirit Symposium, also opening the doors, the gateways to the expression of the children and youth. And he says, let us serve the good above all and avoid arguments and bad situations where evil can expand itself. Flee the darkness from the, for the radiance of the light. Let us remember that even though thousands of miles of darkness in the middle of the night cannot quench even a half inch of the shining flame of a candle, all it takes is a puff of wind to extinguish it. So let us serve the good. And I think the enlightening answers come as this candle to, you know, vanish with the darkness that exists in the hearts of many. Right, Bernadette? Exactly, because the light always wins. Always. Always. Yeah. Do you see the light? Is, oh my gosh. And this is the light. And we can be the light every day. And we can be the light. And we think we are alone, but we are not. Because when we connect to the light and we choose to be the light, we have here oh, so much light. All these inviting spirits, they are here with us. Pushing us, even when you think about quitting, no, nope. they know, they are yes. there. Hold their hands and celebrating today, Jesus. Jesus, yeah. you know, reason, and because Jesus is in here with us, us in, in our heart. So let's embrace the light every day. Yeah. But Bernadette, last year in the symposium, um, we had the child of god song that was brought up yes. to the stage with the children and you are also a singer you play your guitar as before we say the final prayer praying for the harmonization and the preparation of these beautiful efforts in the capital of washington dc today we were in dc serving the homeless as the Spiritist Society of Virginia. And we had the friends and us who were distributing the postcards of the, the program of the symposium in the streets. So we could feel it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's being built. So since you also sing songs and you have a beautiful voice, would you like to wrap up this moment in a musical prayer form? Oh my God! Because you're so good at it. Would you like? Yes. So I yes. sing forgiveness. All right. All right. All right. We're all yours. Yes. Okay. You go. Forgiveness today. Forgiveness is the way. Forgiveness is the powerful tool. Forgiveness right now. Forgiveness is good. Forgiveness for me and you. Forgiveness is a smart. Forgiving your heart. Forgiving you being forgiven. Love and compassion. Letting go is the answer. So forgive. 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 Three times. All right. All right, that's our prayer, that forgiveness can take the capital of the world on yes. April 21st. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you for your time, for your loving heart, and for being with us and encouraging the new generation to step forward and lead the way. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, friends. Bye-bye, and until tomorrow, we now are countdown to 
the United States Spirit Symposium on April 21st, 2018. I think you shouldn't miss it. Wherever you are in the world, if you want, join us. It's not only in the U.S., it's inside the U.S., but it's for everyone around the world. Big hug, and God willing, we'll be back tomorrow for our 21 days countdown to the 12th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. Thank you.